Imagine traveling to a faraway world and encountering an extraterrestrial being that asked, where in the universe is your school? Do you remember how you would describe your school's space address? You could confidently state part of your space address as the following. Wyandotte Academy, 2800 Wyandotte Avenue, Oroville, California, 95966, United States, Planet Earth. You already know a lot about your planet, Earth, but if the extraterrestrial life form went on to ask, so where exactly is planet Earth? You would need to be able to include the next part of your space address, your planetary system. A planetary system is a group of objects in space that have come together to form a neighborhood, a very big, spacious neighborhood. Get it? Spacious? That's a little interplanetary humor there. All planetary systems have a star at the center and a collection of planets and other small objects, smaller objects that orbit around it. We call the planetary system that we are part of our solar system. The shape of Earth's solar system looks a lot like a bullseye target. The sun is in the bullseye at the center and the orbits of the eight planets are similar to the rings around it. Astronomers know for certain about several hundred other planetary systems, but most astronomers believe there may be billions of other planetary systems in the universe besides our own. It's believed that our solar system formed a very long time ago from a huge cloud of gas and dust. Just how long ago did it form? A really long time ago. Many scientists think our solar system is about four and a half billion years old. You can think of our solar system as a gigantic neighborhood in space, but instead of being made up of houses or apartments like the neighborhood you might live in, our solar system is made up of the sun and the celestial bodies that orbit around it. Besides the sun, it includes other interesting things like planets and their moons, dwarf planets, satellites, asteroids, meteoroids, and comets. Our solar system is huge, so huge that some of the objects in it are billions of miles away from each other. As you've heard, the sun is the center of this neighborhood we call our solar system. Our sun is a star, a gigantic, unbelievably hot mass of gas that makes light and heat for everything that orbits around it. The sun is so gigantic that Earth could easily fit inside it more than one million times. There are eight planets in our solar system. The planet Mercury is the closest to the Sun, followed by Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. One easy way to remember the order of the planets is to remember this sentence or mnemonic device. Many very energetic mermaids just swam under Neptune. Besides these eight major planets, there are also a number of smaller planet-like objects in our solar system called dwarf planets. Pluto is the most famous dwarf planet because it was considered to be a major planet until 2006, when astronomers discovered other small planet-like objects in our solar system. Many astronomers from all over the world met to discuss a new definition of what makes a planet. Why did Pluto get demoted or reduced in rank from planet to dwarf planet? Well, astronomers have agreed that a planet has to be able to clear its orbit of most other objects, such as asteroids and other space debris. Because it's so small, Pluto hasn't cleared these leftover pieces of rock and dust from, the, from its orbit yet. So we classify Pluto now as a dwarf planet. Planets don't make their own light like stars do. When you look up and see a planet shining steadily in the night sky, it is shining because the planet is reflecting the sun's light, not because it's making its own. If the light you see appears to be twinkling, uh, this is a star, not a planet. Each of the eight planets in our solar system receives light and heat from the sun as it travels in its own special path or orbit around the sun. The orbits of the eight major planets are larger and larger 
the farther away from the Sun they are. Uh, Mercury's orbit is the smallest because it's the closest to the Sun. Neptune's orbit is the largest because that planet is the farthest away. Many, but not all, of the planets have their own natural satellites or moons that orbit around them. Like Earth's moon, these moons travel around a planet at the same time as the planet orbits the Sun. It is the light from our Sun shining into the solar system and being reflected back to us that enables astronomers to see a planet and its moons. Even though Earth has only one moon, some of the planets have many. In fact, one of Jupiter's moons, Ganymede, is larger than the planet Mercury. The amount of time it takes a planet to travel once completely around the Sun in its orbit is called its planetary year. Planets close to the Sun have shorter planetary years than planets that are farther away. Mercury's orbit is the fastest of all the eight planets, taking only 88 Earth days to complete its planetary year. But Neptune takes 165 Earth years to go once around the Sun. So a 100-year-old grandmother on Earth wouldn't even be one planetary year old if she lived on Neptune. Since Neptune's discovery in 1846, Neptune has made just over one trip around the Sun. Besides orbiting the Sun, each of the eight planets in our solar system also, also rotates on its own axis. Remember, an axis is the imaginary line that goes from the planet's North Pole through its South Pole, right through its center. One day on a planet is the time it takes the planet to rotate one full time on its axis. Other planets have shorter and longer days than Earth. One day on Mercury takes 58 Earth days because Mercury rotates on its axis very slowly. Jupiter's rotation is much faster, clocking in at about one Jupiter day for every 10 Earth hours. Although the eight planets in our solar system have a lot in common, they are also very different. Many astronomers believe that all eight planets have a solid core or rocky center, but the first four planets, those closest to the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are small in comparison to the other four and have a solid rocky terrain or land surface that you could walk on if you visited them. The four planets farthest away from the Sun, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, are called gas giants. Why? Because they're mostly made of gas, so you couldn't walk on their surface if you visited them because there's no solid surface or terrain to walk on. The gas giants are also huge. Jupiter is so huge that more than 1,300 Earths could fit inside of it. Most of the eight planets have moons, as I've said. Mercury and Venus are the only two planets in our solar system that do not have any moons. Moons are satellites, or small objects that orbit around a larger planet. Earth's one moon is considered to be a satellite because it orbits around Earth. Besides the Sun, the eight major planets, their moons, and the dwarf planets, there's also other neighbors that help make up the neighborhood we call our solar system. These include asteroids, meteoroids, and comets. An asteroid is a space rock that does not have an atmosphere. An asteroid is too small to be classified as a planet because it doesn't have enough mass or substance to clear other objects and debris from its orbit around the Sun, and it's not round. Most asteroids in our solar system, thousands of them, are located in orbit between Mars and Jupiter in a ring called the Asteroid Belt. The largest known object in the Asteroid Belt is Ceres, which is about as large around as the state of Montana is wide. Ceres, once classified as an asteroid, is now classified as a dwarf planet because of its, its spherical in shape. Because it has not cleared most other objects from its orbit, Ceres is not classified as a major planet. Most asteroids are smaller than Ceres, though. Many scientists believe that asteroids are material that was left over from the birth of our solar system. 
One of our neighbors in our solar system has three different names, meteoroid, meteor, and meteorite, depending on where you find it. Okay, stay with me here. Meteoroids are space debris made of rock or metal that range in size from tiny pebbles to large boulders. Many scientists believe they may have broken off from other objects in our solar system, like asteroids. They're called meteoroids when they are orbiting the sun in space, but once they enter Earth's atmosphere, they're called meteors. Meteors are also known as shooting stars because they leave a bright streak or line of light that shoots through the sky. This streak of light is caused when the meteor burns up on its downward journey through the Earth's atmosphere. Most meteors are small enough that they burn up completely before reaching Earth, but sometimes the larger ones make it to the surface. Meteors that reach the surface of the Earth are called meteorites. Sometimes very large meteorites leave large craters or pits on the surface of Earth. Did you know there are snowballs in space? It's true. They're called comets. Actually, a comet is a chunk of ice, dust, and gas that orbits the sun in a long stretched out circle. A comet begins in the outer reaches of the solar system and occasionally its orbit brings it close to the sun. As a comet approaches the sun, part of its ice evaporates, making it glow and form a bright tail that trails behind it, sometimes for millions of miles. Comets shine like this because sunlight reflects off those tiny particles of dust that are in the comet's tail. Halley's Comet is a very famous comet that was discovered by English astronomer Edmund Halley. He was the first to realize that it was the same celestial body that returned to Earth's skies every 76 years. In the year 1705, he correctly predicted that the comet would return in the year 1758. The comet was then named Halley's Comet in his honor. It was last seen on Earth in 1986. So you now know that you can describe our solar system as a very large neighborhood in space. It's made up of many interesting neighbors, including the sun, eight planets, their moons, dwarf planets, asteroids, meteors, and comets. Our solar system is only one of many planetary systems in the universe. And it's a great place in the universe to live. Thank you.